VBI here. I want to stop and say thanks. Thanks for tuning in and checking out whatever the video is about that's about ready to come up next. If you could take a minute and hit subscribe, I'd greatly appreciate it. And if you enjoy what you've seen here, make sure to hit the like button. We'd greatly appreciate your support. Anyhow, guys, all that aside, let's get on with the show. Right, so let's start here. I couldn't help but purchase this thing. Uh, the camera isn't really going to do this fan size uh, justice. This is a 107 billion millimeter. Um, this is 115 volt, 50, 60 hertz, 85 watt Tarzan. Um, the reason this is interesting to me is because the Tarzan label name um, might be familiar to some of you guys that follow along real close. It's the same company that makes the fans for the bird dummy loads, the big ones. And a friend of mine seen this at a ham fest and says, oh, I gotta have that. He promptly showed it to me and I said, oh, I want one too. That thing moves a scooching ton of air. I mean, a lot of air. <clears throat> so I was playing with it earlier today. I mean, it, it moves a lot of air. A lot of air. A lot of air. So I was just totally farting with this earlier today. I couldn't help myself. I had things. Some big blades. But they're small compared to this. I go over here and uh, grab these. Ugh, son, of a, son of a, come on, motherfucking son of a doodly fart. Nothing. Look at that. Whoa. But this isn't all fan, this is just the way it was packaged for me. Let's take the fan off the top, see what's on the inside. Das German. Das German. These are metal. This is 115 volt. Das, suck your pecker through a golf ball fucking uh, garden hose. Das German. So we're going to come back over to this in a minute. This is, I think, part of a Collins set. This over here. This is an auto antenna tuner. And it's got an SWR gauge on the side of it over here. It starts at zero, goes to 10. Voltage, caution, high voltage, auto key, 400 volts B positive, radio sense, 200 volt B positive. Hmm. Well, we didn't buy it for tuners, we bought it for something else. But first, I want to play with DOS golf ball through garden hose. That will chop your finger clean off. I mean, clean off. Whew. Okay. So let's see if I can remember how to wire this here. I think I'm going to need DOS here. Dog wood, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> just bear with me, you guys. We're going to eventually get around to what I'm, I'm here to do tonight. I just can't help myself. I've got to play. Okay, so black goes to black. And then white goes to brown. It's gonna be one start of the capacitor, I do believe. Okay. And so then green goes to Y, yellow, green, I do believe. No, let me think about this for a second. 
so green, yellow, brown. Brown's gonna be hot in this situation. Um, yep, yep, brown's gonna be hot. Yep. Damn German European wiring. Okay, and the neutral is gonna be blue wire, the return over here. Do you believe? Uh, grip it and rip it. Quantac. Blowing shit off the workbench here. Holy shit. It's still gaining in rip Shit on the other side of room blowing around. Hold on. What? Yeah, it just blew my notepad off work, man. I'll get the dead zone of air right here. Get a little low pressure vacuum, uh, sucking it back in. That's scary. That's scariness. Uh, I had to get the pom pom out. Um, I actually had a customer send me those, and he sent it to me underneath the auspices or the idea of uh, using that to demonstrate um, airflow out of a cabinet. And he goes, Man, Tech Nine's got the green ones, or whatever it is, which I have never seen. And um, he goes, I only had one left and it, it just happened to be pink. I was like, oh yeah, that's gonna make it onto camera. And then till the day where I had to throw something up there as a visual aid. So I say thanks for that. My customer out there, you know who you are. So I think I wrote it on a piece of paper because he told me I had to give him a shout out. That's uh, 392 pom pom tested. So 392. Thanks buddy, I appreciate it. That thing scares the shit out of me. I take your fingers and spit them off down the street. Imagine mounting this up in your attic someplace and hooking this up to your bathroom. It's your fart sucker. Whew. It scares the poop out of me. All right, so I want to show you why we bought these. The Obscura. Uh, tuner. Now, if you're a avid Collins fan, look away. Just just fast forward until you don't see this on the workbench no more. Because what we're going to do with these is not what they were in intended to be used for at all. Um, get rid of this can plug. I'm just assuming these are Collins because they don't have any Collins markings on them. I'm just going off the paint. And there's probably some guy out there that knows exactly what this is. He's right now going, oh my god. We bought these for the parts. Let me explain to you why. This box is not worth much as it sits unless you know what's on the inside. What's on the inside, you ask? That. Have you seen the price of vacuum caps here lately? Now, this isn't a large, what they call large throw. There's a little tiny wire that runs up the center of this thing. 
and it causes this diaphragm bellows to move. But we bought it for the vacuum cap and the inducted tuners, which this thing is really neat how this works. There's a spindle wheel, okay, and then you have your collector wheel, which is insulated, and then this silver plated copper um, lead that runs between the two. The primary reason that we bought this though, this is your to add and subtract an inductor, and this adds and subtracts capacitance. The primary thing that we're after is all the fitting hardware for this and this. I'm not interested in the stepper motors. And we see these parted out all the time. And normally this whole ass end is removed for whatever reason. But this thing's all full of doorknobs and porcelain standoffs, little roller inductor here. I mean, it's all full of good little bits. So unless you're the one guy, maybe there's five guys in the whole country, that has a call-in set that this is attached to, this thing would be worthless. This will live again in many, 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 many other projects into the future here. So we bought it for parts. I'll show you another little goodies box. Another Rotron 12 volt DC blower fan and another one. Dems pure gold right there. Look at all these doorknobs. I'll bless them. And these little sprags. I can't, I can't express to you how valuable these parts are to me. And they're unobtainium. Spool of mag wire. Look at this little tiny blower we bought. Isn't that cute? We don't know what we're going to use that for, but we'll use it for something in the future. Oh yes. Because the other thing that makes you sound cooler than cool is when you take a W2IHY EQ Plus and run it into another WY IHY EQ Plus into another W2IHY EQ Plus. This is the most important thing to me out of the whole lot. You guys see me build with all this stuff all the time. Now I'll take and I'll clean these all up. I'll test them. I'll high pot test them. Make sure we don't have a leak down issue. It's like this one's been sitting in some heat. It's kind of sticky. But I mean, seriously, this is a 50 puff cat or 50 puff doorknob. Look at what those cost these days to buy. If you can find them, here's another 50. Here's another 50. Good and stiff. This has been kept out of moisture. 40 kV DC at what frequency though? That's a million dollar question. Um, wow, cool, cool. What are you? It's a 50 K at what frequency? These are all the same. This spool of mag wire is invaluable to me. Gotta remember, I live out here in the land, the lake, the dry desert of Idaho, where you meet the guy that's got a couple rolls of mag wire, and he'll stand, he'll just sit there and kind of glare at you with a, with a shitty and grin, knowing that you need this stuff to be able to finish some project you're working on. And he's been sitting on it his entire adult life, waiting for you to come along. 0 0.05 mf 10 kv dc the plastic capacitor incorporation i got a bunch of these i use them on inputs this is exciting i love this stuff lord help my wife when i die and she's got to sell off all this stuff Let's see what are you guys you are 1,000 puff, 15 kV. We will follow all of these into the appropriate drawers after I high pot test them and clean them. This will go into a tote. 
these go into this box. I hope that little piece of paper is the decoder ring of how to wire it. I can go up there. These will go down here. Hold on, we're gonna get someplace here in a minute, I swear to God. These can go down here for right now. Let's see, what does this say? Green, black, white. So black brown is hot. White black is to the starting capacitor, which I don't have. Black white green is to white return. Okay. So it says I need a 0 .4, 0 0.47 starting capacitor, which I happen to have, but it's in another box, but this little piece of paper makes this valuable because now we know how to make this. Uh, let's see, Rotron, once again, Ro Rotron manufacturer. Let's see, what is this thing? 115 volts, 6850. Da, 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 da. Doesn't give me a CFM rating. Imagine strapping that to the bottom of like your 800 or 250B, just a single little 800 or 250B. That'd be cool. Okay, hold on. Okay. So the reason that I brought you all here today is because it's time to slowly work myself towards getting completely caught up. I've got just a few builds left in the queue. I got a couple LD Moss boxes left that I need to finish um, for the public. I've got a 32 pill and a four pill and um, a six pill and um, I think another just got a couple boxes left, like a handful left that I have to finish. And um, I went and I looked in the book to see who was next. And uh, this gentleman was, he ordered a four pill. And I called him today. I was really excited to talk to him. I felt bad, but I was really excited to talk to him and tell him, hey, it's time for your turn. And he, uh, he got all excited. Believe it or not, there is a system to the madness over here. Um, this is just one of these deals where it has to get done. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. And so we're going to take our time and we're going to bang this thing out and make it so it's finished. Now, I don't know if you guys have noticed here lately in the last year, but the super small four pill, straight four pill two by four cabinets um, are unobtainium. I had the cabinet for, well, I bought the cabinet once, you know, the order was put in, but somewhere along the lines, the board got misplaced. So I was able to get my good friends at ICA to cut me another board and another heat sink stock and send it to me. So I get to utilize this cabinet to which it was purchased for. And I'm gonna get this thing the hell out of here get it on down the road. So we're going to build ourselves a little majestic straight four pill with side bend on it. And my gentleman that bought this happens to be, uh, um, let's just say deep, deep south persuaded. And his guys and him like to talk side bend to each other as they're running down the road. And so I told him I'd build him a kick-ass little four pill and that's what we're going to do. I gotta tell you guys, the bigger this monster over here gets, uh, the more energy it takes on the sidelines to support it. And I have not been feeling the enthusiasm to, to which I once twas having for this, uh, this little adventure the last couple weeks. I, uh, I did that Metron video here earlier this week and I went back and I watched it myself because I had a friend of mine point out to me just yesterday he goes, man, are you, uh, you starting to get burned out? And I'm like, yes, yes, I am. And, uh, 
goes, boy, it's really starting to tell on your voice. You've really started to lose your enthusiastic edge towards doing this. And it's, I went on to explain to him, and I'm going to explain to all, all of you now that it's, um, my phone doesn't occupy my time as much as it did so now that I'm not taking orders, which I haven't done for a long time. Um, basically what I have to do every day is spend my, most of my day on the phone telling people no, I can't either work on their stuff, even though I want to. Um, it's just I physically don't have the room to store it to be able to have it as an inventory of things to work on. And the other part of my day is spent telling people where they're at in the line of things to get repaired. And the whole idea behind not taking on any more new work and the whole idea behind not taking on any more repairs is that I can eventually dwindle that pile down. Well, the pile keeps growing, <laughs> it seems like. And no matter how many of these I do, it doesn't seem like I'm ever going to see the end of this. And it gets really frustrating and it gets really defeating on a guy. I mean, all I want to do is do the best I can with each one of these I build, not be in a hurry, not be rushed, have fun as I'm doing it, and have fun working with the people. And more and more, what I end up bumping my head up against is people get tired of waiting. I mean, it's not like they came into this with their eyes wired shut and they didn't know that they were coming into a long wait, but it's, it's just tough. It's, it's a, a continuous test of patience every day. But it's okay. I'll put on my big boy undies. I'll take off my stiletto heels. I'll put on my man work boots with steel toes. Buckle down and get the job done. Let me cut some pill strips. I'll be right back. So did I ever share about, share with you guys about the time that I discovered that I was allergic to carbon, or uh, to uh, copper dust? No, I don't think I ever did. I don't think I ever brought that up. So I, uh, for a lot of years, have been using this Scott's mask. This thing is a lifesaver. Um, it's not because I'm a prepper, and I think the government's going to come use nerve gas on us, or there's going to be some nuclear accident, and it's going to cause us a nuclear winter. A little Scott mask would only buy you about maybe six more hours before you end up getting any of that shit into your body anyhow. Not that it would leach through your skin, but anyhow. Um... I made the mistake when I was working on a copper mine, and I was soldering or sanding those beautiful copper boards that I remember we took and we had the, the heat sink, and we machined out the heat sink, and we had copper inserts that went inside the heat sink. Um, the inserts that went in the heat sink, those copper slabs, I uh, was sanding on those, and it didn't even dawn on me that I was sitting there breathing pure copper dust. And that copper dust made me so sick. I spent two days with my sinuses just about bleeding and blowing my nose and having the, the stuff come out of my head that was green from the copper dust. And I was all congested and felt horrible for days from that ant build. That really woke me up on the fact that my body does not like copper dust and since then I have tried to leave a copper dust, aluminum dust, steel dust free environment for my lungs. So like this when I go to cut the pill strips I don't want to be breathing the glass dust from the fiber board, and I definitely don't want to be breathing that copper dust that's coming from the copper cladding that's on it. So I put on my Scott's Plisk mask, and I go to doing my job. I love that thing. The problem is it kills all the outside smells. I don't know, there's probably quite a few of you that are ex-military and had to spend a lot more time in a, in a mask than I have. But the micron level of that mask is so high that when you put the mask on, all you smell is the rubber and nothing else. You can't smell anything else. Nothing else. And uh, 
you rip that thing off, sometimes it's an assault on your senses. Depending on what the room smells like around you. I love that mask. I'm sure it's going to keep me from having lung cancer. <coughs> no, I smoked for too many years. I'm pretty sure that's what's going to end up getting me. So I got my grandpa. Even though he quit smoking like 20 years previous. And it still killed him. But when you're young and you're tough, nothing can hurt you. Nothing. Now that I'm older and I got kids, I got reason to see my last years of my life, my 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and so on. I look back at some of the things I've done to my body as a younger man and go, stupid. But the best I can do is I sit here and make the sacrifice for you all by breathing this, this flux resin smoke. The best I can do is try and limit the damage, so... That's why I suck on water instead of cigarettes and <sighs> I wear my mask. I'm hang this up in its appropriate place. So all you up and coming builders out there are guys that want to try and build. Don't be cutting anything or breathing any of this shit in because the glass never leaves your body. Your body can kind of process the copper but not very well. It's just better if you never let it into your system. God, that time with that 32 pill. Oh, Lord have mercy, that. That was a rough couple days. Painful couple days. The fine details. Come on. Come here. There we go. So I figured before we jump into some time lapse, today's gate on this particular video will be me shooting Skip to CC the other day, yesterday. We finally got a little bit of Mother Nature, just a little bit. Um, just want to come out and talk and tell you why we were here. And Induce a little bit of fun to the situation, which is me dinking around with them fans. God, I feel bad for my wife when I die. There's so many parts in this room. I'm like, seriously, have you guys gone to, like, let's say, Max Gain Systems, Alan's page, and seen what he's selling some of these capacitors for? It's breathtaking. It's breathtaking what people want for a, a glass vacuum capacitor these days, especially a Jennings. Um, that's why I want with the ones that come out of Japan. The Hayatsus or whatever they are. Hayhan, Hayagudzuadzas or whatever. They're great caps. On those last two, three thousands I built. I couldn't find the Jennings as the way I wanted. I, I just... They weren't existent. They weren't available. So, I mean, it, you did, it had nothing to do with money. It was all about I couldn't find the dang values I wanted from something that was fairly new. I mean, heck, they don't even bother to polish them anymore. You buy stuff nowadays, and I'm not talking about max gain. I'm just saying overall in general, when you get a cap, they don't even take the time to polish the silver anymore. It's just flat out a raw pull which is rough, rough, rough. 
Okay, I'm gonna make some solder because that's the last little bit I got. Everybody goes, what do you mean by make solder? Well, if you come here and you spend some time, I'll have you make solder as part of your spending time here process. I got this jig that's at the end of the workbench. And we take a bunch of solder and we twist it together in a very, very fine persuasion. And the reason we do that is so we don't have to deal with the over splatter. Okay, uh, the thick solder's got a ton a flux to the, uh, the makeup of it, where the thin stuff doesn't have as much. So I twist a bunch of it together. I twist a bunch of it together. That way I can keep the solder splooge, the flux splooge, to the bare minimum. You'll see me constantly wiping, and what I'm doing is I'm wiping off the little bits of flux that have popped off this thing in the process of making it. Like, there's two little eyelets of it here. Well, if I get in here while it's still warm, I usually can pick it off before it leaves a resin mark on the board. Just like that. And most of this will disappear once we re-clear the box at the end of the build. Honestly. It's just one of the things that you figured out, you know, as you go, you're like, God, I just don't want this to look like glass. How do I make it look like glass? So you start critiquing it. It's like my daughter, the artist. Here in the last <clears throat> four months, her uh, charcoal art has gone. I mean, she's like photo quality now. And what she has done is she's taken a deep dive into it. And she's figured out eraser tech and she's figured out She's got like 65 different kinds of erasers and she's got the exact right pencils that she needs. And she's really figured out how to uh, get the most from the media that she's currently working in. Well, it's the same thing you do here. And it's the same thing you do if you learn how to weld or if you work on cars or if you, doesn't matter to me, fill in the blank. You spend a little bit of time figuring out how to make it perfect. I used to work at this place called Power Bar at one point. When I came in from building power lines, I couldn't find a job immediately. So I went to this temp agency and they sent me out to this company called Power Bar. And at Power Bar, they make those energy bars. Yes, those are made here in Boise, Idaho. And they put me on the hand ads line. And like, I stood around and I watched these guys do the hand ads for the first night. And what they were doing was wasteful and counterproductive. They would have these guys because they're small ingredients. When you're when you're doing stuff on an industrial scale like that, um, let's say you're going to add to each bar an overall average X amount of salt. Well, that amount, the amount of salt that you're adding is just like, I mean, minuscule, right? But when you're talking a vat that's like the size of your garage, that now turns into, let's say like 15 ounces of salt. They're having these guys weigh out every single ingredient individually on the table, right? And then they were having them hand mix it all on the table. I was like, that's stupid. So they have this thing called a vibrator table. Okay. It's like the same mechanism that's inside of an aggregate separator for concrete, but it's on a table and it's for settling. Don't, I'm getting off track. Anyhow, there's this table that vibrates. 
So I looked at the table of vibrated and I looked at what they were doing and then they were putting all this ingredients, they were putting that into a plastic bag and then they were putting that into a tote and then they give a total final weight. And then they knew based off that total final weight that they were within a certain percentage of being correct on the amount of the ingredients. Well, me being me, I stood back and I watched all this for a night and I went, this is stupid. So I talked my boss into let me do an experiment. And what I did is I took the tote, put it on the scale and then proceeded to add all the ingredients to the tote. So first I took and I weighed all the ingredients out and I knew what their weights would be individually. And then I took the tote, plus the bag, tarred the thing, put it at zero, and started to add the ingredients individually to the tote with the plastic bag in it. So we get all the ingredients down and we time ourselves, or I time myself as I was doing this. Get all the ingredients down and in the tote. Now I walk over to the, the vibrator table and that's actually for part of when they were doing chocolate bars, how they um, got this big big machine, which I figured out how to work on later later on, which called is called an Enrover. And it's got a cart that runs through on a conveyor, on a chain conveyor, and the bars come through and they blow air through this bed of chocolate and it comes up and it hits the chocolate bar. And then they have a curtain of chocolate that drops down onto the bar and that runs out onto a conveyor. The conveyor goes over the top of this vibrator table and the vibrator table sits and goes and it jiggles all the air that's in the chocolate out. And then at the same time, they're blowing cold air down on the bar and that's what allows you to get that nice smooth chocolate coating on the outside of a candy bar. I don't know if you know any of this, now you do. Hopefully I'm not taken from your life by telling you this. Anyhow, I, uh, walk over to the vibrator table, which is out of line at the moment for the hand ads that we were using for the peanut nut, pe uh, peanut freaking schmicklick mew energy bar. And uh, I put the tote with the lid open and the put the tote with the lid open and me hold on to the plastic sack that's holding all the the hand added ingredients and that shit just sits there and frosts and boils inside a bag and I set it back close the tote and they sent it off and they went and they looked at it I wasn't on the hand end line for very long um, three days and not too long after that they were offering me a full-time position there I uh, that, that one little step of not having to mix everything on the table and not having to individually do the ingredients, just the amount of time that was saved increased productivity of the hand ads department by 75%. Um, two days later, what you'd normally come in, you'd see two or three totes full of ingredients sitting there waiting for the next shift to take over. Um, I had like five pallets sitting there. And I had quit like five hours into my shift and I was off doing other things um, over in the kitchen department because I got bored. I uh, not one to sit around and be lazy, I guess. So they moved me quite along. Um, then they wanted me to be part of the maintenance department. And then after that, I had ended up finding a full-time job in something I was more interested in. But it's that kind of thing, just the creative inventiveness and some of us have a son of a don't, and it's really hard to shut off in those of us that have it. And it's really hard to shut off, corral, maintain. I constantly am watching people do things, and I'm like, it'd be so much easier if they did it this way, but I, or cleaner, or it'd be more efficient, or save more time, or eh, is what it is. But then in other things in life, I'm completely inept. Sometimes with people skills, I'm not the greatest in the world, but it is what it is. Get transformer just that way, so it's perfectly straight. Let's add a little bit more magic schmoo to the situation. Bigger the gab. 
Prepared to chat. Okay, let's come over here to these. Ah, hold on. This has got to have side bend on it. In the back of the transformer, this leading edge, I always sand that back. Um, in a Class C box, it's not that big of a deal if the back of this transformer touches the board and for some reason causes it to go to ground. In a sideband based unit, that's a big deal. So, we just take it over, hit it on the belt sander real quick, and we're done. And I should have been wearing my mask. We'll go with I was holding my breath. How about that? Cool. I feel comfortable about that as well. So... Slobber. A little bit more down. Okay. Now let's put our inputs in place. It's easy. It's like fishing. With enough repetition, you can eventually get good at it. Okay. And that is the heart of the machine. So now, let me cut some wire. Do 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 stack more parts on here what you say so I'm sparing you guys the pain of watching me measure out all the values of all the parts and checking the values of the resistors and pre-trimming this and putting that together I figure at this point in the game for all of you guys that watch you've seen this about a hundred thousand times and I'm trying to save you from slowly slipping into a coma and wanting to commit suicide. God knows I've seen it enough to last me a lifetime. All right. Round and round we go. Where we stop, no one knows. It's like lace in a shoe. Now it doesn't matter, but it's something that I really take pride in is that we don't cross the wires. Okay. Um, absolutely doesn't matter at all. Makes no difference. It's just a personal neatness thing to me. Had to have an interesting conversation with my wife this evening. She, uh, she come to me and she was all excited. And rightfully so. She was watching another YouTube channel and this guy um, has got a company that allows him to sell his merchandise in the banner below so I could be like right below what you're watching right now and uh, <clears throat> he uh, sells hoodies and jackets and you know, shirts and just, just basically the, the same stuff I sell. 
and she wanted to know if we could go and look at doing that. And I said, yeah, but we don't really sell enough shirts or jackets or hats or that kind of thing to justify it. And she's like, no, 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 you don't understand. So she broke it down for me in the amount of hours it takes to get the shirts made, um, the process of getting the artwork right, and she just laid it all out. She made a really strong argument. And I said, well, babe, that's great and all, but they can't be cheap shirts, and the prints have got to be exactly the same. Because I've said a hundred times, over and over and over again, that I will not sacrifice quality for quantity. I don't do it here. I'm not going to do it with shirts or hats or any other stuff, like our hats that we have. I don't know if you guys have ever seen them before. But they're a nice flex fit hat and they're embroidered. Now I could save a ton of money and just have this silk screened on there. It's not what I want. So we'll see if this company can do everything it says they're gonna do for the money they say they can get it done in. It saves us a lot of work and a lot of time. And they do the shirts and the hats per production order. When I do it now, I've got to go order a thousand dollars worth of shirts, you know, five hundred dollars worth of hats. The coats are really expensive, really, really expensive, because they're only ones and twos. Well, that and we've got a big old pile of shirts here and a big old pile of hats here. And we have the back stock that we have to worry about. And the other thing I had to explain to my wife is that it's not, this isn't, this is a really niche market that we have, right? I know that X-Force in its, in its heyday when Carl ran the thing, they had shirts and, well, they had a shirt. I don't know. I can't think of any other builder right now off the top of my head, and if I'm wrong, I'm sure that I'm going to get corrected on it. Um, there's not too many others out there that have got apparel for sale, and I don't think that people buy them because they think the shirts are cool. I think they're just trying to help me and show support and a little bit of love for the channel. And the sales for those have really... It's like when we first came out with shirts, everybody wanted one, right? So we went through first our first 500, and then we went through another 500. And then we went through another thousand of them. And then it's just kind of, <whistles> okay, now it's like every other build that I do, the guy wants a shirt or a hat or something. Uh, and I think that has to do with market saturation. We have a very small market of people, you know what I mean? So I don't know. That's that's her department, and she she's kind of brought it to the table, which I was proud of her for bringing it up. It sounds like it could be a good idea. Um, I'm gonna let her run with it, and we'll see what happens. So if you guys see an advertisement banner running below for swag, it's actually from me. Um, I refuse to make this a Patreon channel. I refuse. I refuse to have Patreonage. I refuse to. This is me showing you what I'm doing for no compensation. The channel is monetized, and the only reason it's monetized is for legal reasons. It has nothing to do with money, because believe me, my viewership is so low that it doesn't pay anything anyhow. I just, I don't know. I'm, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see, we'll see what happens. So wish us luck. If you see that pop up here in the future, that's what that's all about. I feel happy. This guy's going to be happy. Well, here's where we're at. Um, I like kind of lost track of time. I just started going and going and going and going and going. Um, we got our capacitor distribution in there. We've got our bias in there. Our rough input and output tunes in. Our sideband delay is in. 
Um, our bias control switch relay is in, our flyback resistors are in, our bias chokes are ready to be in place after I measure to see, make sure we got the right diodes in there. Our remote wires are run. This thing, all I gotta do is drop it in a cabinet, run a piece of uh, wire from here and here back to the coax connectors, hook up the remote, and Bob's your uncle. Put a fan in it, put some power wire in it, tune it, test it, and we're done. So we'll be done sometime tomorrow. I'm out of here. Peace, love, and smelly chicken grease. I'll see you guys here in a bit. What are we drinking tonight, brother? You drinking your Milwaukee's best? Uh, natural light. Natural hey, BBI. Hey, BBI. I'm going to wave my hand to you, man, if I can. Oh, triple seven. Triple seven, working this old oldie but goodie 457 Navajo. Just got down. We got triple seven out there. Rocking his nappy hoe. And now, and now we got 88 and Mojave kicking it on his natty light. <laughs> you boys are having too much fun down there in the great state of Shaky. Your friend out here in the corner on these little mud duck wads got down. That radio is putting it down, no doubt about it. Hey, BBI, you take care of Big Brother up there sounding real good. Hey, you got the, you got your fans down here. You got some fans down here. You got the landlord up in uh, Lakewood. He's only talking about you, man. Dog, go ahead. Man, go ahead. Throw, throw him a biscuit. Throw him a biscuit. Hey, BBI, throw landlord in Lakewood a biscuit. Uh, I don't even know who you're talking about, bro. Um, if you do hear my friend Slam Dunk out there, you tell him I said hello. I know he's probably there in the background a little bit, but uh, roll a five back up that direction up there into the, the Evergreen State and tell him I said hello. <laughs> you and your nappy hoe got down, no doubt. That's nothing left, I guess I heard in my radio. I don't know. Hey, BB, I got a question. I was going to call you on the phone. Well, my phone rang all day today. It rang all day today. So I don't know if you would have been able to get through, 14. Roger that. Yeah. I understand. I know sometimes it's hard. I just had a question for you. Yeah, we've, uh, we've had some dealings before, you and I. Well, hopefully they're helpful to you, anyhow. He says my goal and my job. Yeah, man, just give me a ring. We'll talk about whatever you need to. I thought there for a minute I was I was uh, talking to my buddy there, old Snuffleupagus around L.A. But I could be mistaken. 410? 410 there, BBI. Yeah, this is Walking Eagle. <laughs> In fact, you've had your hands inside this amp. I sent it to you. Remember the Tech 9 amp with a 2290 in it? I guess we're just a bunch of mud ducks. Well, I do remember something like that, but I'm not going to go be talking about it on the air, 410. Oh, yes, I wasn't expecting it to. Right. Hey, CC, go lick your water cooler and calm down. Put my dog on nap nappy hole south. Good. Thank you. Is CC getting up and getting down? Oh, what was that? I'm sorry, BBI. Oh, CC, come up in there and he was. Uh, test one, two, test one, two, test one, two. <laughs> I told him to calm down and go lick his water cooler tube. That put a little bit of shock into his spark into his step. 
He said he's trying to do a foundation drive for something about wind, women's undergarments or something. I don't know. He needs $10,000 or something. I don't know. <laughs> yes, sir, I do know exactly who you are now. You're my knife-making friend. Yep. You're the one who owns a knife-making store in the middle of uh, the amusement park. I know who you are, 410. <laughs> Well, they're not just for cleaning underneath your fingernails, CC. Man, brother, I gotta tell you, CC, I can hear every bit of equipment running in the background with you right now. Like, every lock, step, drip, drop of everything you got going on in the background, I can hear it more than I can almost hear you. <laughs> But man, you're a transman, you're wiping out everybody in the background, that's for sure. Mr. CC, on a water cooler in California, your friend in the corner looking at you. And you got your grandbabies working for you. You can hear the elves in the background. I can hear them laughing and talking in the background. Just about as loud as I can hear you, 410. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. All right, all right. Yeah, I just can't be messy, that's all. You know, I just like to mess up things. But let me tell you this one more time, and I said I told you before. Another day, same old resorts. BBI, I see you. Bye, bye, bye. Another day. Same resources in the shorts. I understand how that goes. It's okay. It's a guy thing. We won't judge. They don't know the temperature of the water. And I got down. <laughs> now, where's your partner in crime? We need to call, uh... Three double O and get him out of here. I want to hear that radio, or that amplifier on here. Man, who's that? He ain't going outside, you ready? You said it's raining. He's afraid of making chocolate milk, so he's staying in the house. Is that what you said, there, Roger? <laughs> no, duck <that's> like it. <laughs> you know, he just got he got off a. The uh, the salt mine, and he gets to that rain like a real quick. That right now. Homeboy, he sits behind a computer all day and does math. What the? God, God, baby, you messy tonight. Hey, baby, you get out of there. I uh, had a couple of Heinekens or. Some, uh, I don't know, Del Shecky's or something. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna let the channel go, cause I know if I don't, then boy, they ain't gonna have no fun with them toys. Hey, BBI, I see ya. Yeah, I better let it go, CC, or otherwise you're gonna be on Facebook. I was yelling at him, and I was yelling at him. He must not have no ears. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man, I don't drink. <clears throat> I would drink for, jeez, better part of a decade now. It gets in the way. It's not. It's really not all that much fun if you sit back and think about it. It's a good way to waste money, though. I know that. Nah, man, I, I got way too much work going on all the time. I can't get messy like that no more. I had to grow up, put my big boy boots on, and uh, pretend like I wasn't walking with a tripod. 410? Yeah, right. Yeah. You tell your grandbabies hello, all right? I'll put it on you another day, Cece. You take care. It's always a pleasure to hear you come up in my radio. 
And let me know how it works out on the underwear and women's undergarment panty drive that you're doing down there for $10,000. I don't know what that's all about. Maybe you'll explain it to me on the phone tomorrow. You have a good night, CC. BBI in the corner. A little bit of quads got down. They don't know the temperature of the water. And I got down. Tell CC. BBI is the man. Compton. Oh, he is. He says something about five dollars for a G-string, and I'm thinking, man, they only make two. It only costs only two bucks because he makes them out of floss. It's that used jailhouse floss. You know what I'm saying, there, eighty-eight. We're not getting over him. Well, I just hear Daniel Sun in there in between keys. Good evening, time to you, Daniel Sun. Okay, so the ability to say that you're not perfect, this is a lot about a guy. Okay, so. I'm not perfect. No, it's not going to do it. There it goes. See, I had this installed. And I didn't realize that my soldering iron had slipped and pushed on this real hard. So I go to key it up the first time and it no make, no power. I went, what the heck? So I was very quickly able to trace it right down and figured out that the RF wasn't coming past the relay and wasn't getting to the input section. Just had dinner, so give me a second. Let's get this whole thing set up and then we're gonna do the test thing and I gotta be done with this. I gotta move on to other things for the day. Okay, so peak meter's on. Voltage is up. We're currently on the 2950. So, have we cleared the holy snot out of this thing? So it's never going to corrode. It's always going to look this shiny. It might be a little bit dusty on the inside, but that's about it. Amp off. This over here. is a thousand watt slug in peak. Next over is a thousand in average, and of course the five watt slug between the bird ten thousand watt dummy load and shapa. So let's turn on our twenty nine fifty, and let me put a little bit of drive out there so you guys can see what it's doing. Hello, that's twenty whole watts. Check it out, twenty whole watts. Hello, okay. Turn the amp on. Hello. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Hello. About 600, 600 peak, 200 ish bird. That's with 20 watts of drive. Now let's go on up here. That's a five watt slug. Come on, focus on the right thing. Focus here. It's old trusty five watt slug in reverse. Hello, 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 hello. Hello, one, two. Yeah, needle's moving that little. It's perfect. And it took a long time to get there. I'm here to tell you. It was a struggle. The uh, these new 29 or 2879 transistors don't tune like the old HG2879 transistors. They change, they're constantly changing. I wish somebody could get that across to North that we need a consistent product. But the performance is there. 600 watts with 20 watts of drive. Okay, now I have a feeling that this gentleman is gonna run this with a 955. Well, I happen to have one of those 
right here. Let's hook up that coax. Ooh, coax going in the hole. Okay. I got to talk some skip tonight. I feel like my battery's been recharged as far as this game is concerned. I was getting all whiny and pissy like a little girl in the previous segment. It's tough. It's so hard having to talk to people all day long. Yeah, I'm over it. Okay. So, we'll show you drive. Hello, one, two, one, two, one, two. Hello, 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 hello. Hello, audio. Hello, audio, one, two, one, two. Hello, audio, one, two. Perfectly flat in plus that SWR with the 29 or with the 955 hit in. So last stop on the gravy train of life. We're gonna switch over and we're gonna go to the striker 490. Squeak squeak squeak. Turn the amp off. Turn the 490 on. Let me show you power that's going in it. Back over here to the meters. Hello, audio. Hello, audio. About 125 watts worth of drive. Gets us. Hello, off the scale. Hello, and not sluggishly, like it's getting over there quick. So now we'll go to 2x. Hello, and about 1100 watts peak envelope power out of this thing. Hold on, let me change angles here. So now we're a little bit more straight on the elements. Let's go ahead and zoom on in here real quick. Let's show you what I'm talking about. So now this will make a little bit more sense to you. Okay. Have not changed our power settings or anything. Hello. Hello. This box is working really, 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 really good. Let me show you what I mean. Yeah, let's knock over our armor piercing incinerary explosive or whatever this thing is. Okay. Hello. Hello. It's getting with it. So now the only thing we haven't tested yet, live here on camera, is our fan. So let's take a moment. Let's get that all put together. Let's test drive our fan. It wants to run. It wants to run. Now watch. I'll do this on camera, and I know, I know I'm going to curse myself right now. I'll do this on camera. As soon as I kid up, I'm going to have problems with the fan. It's going to kill the fan. Or maybe not. Or maybe it will. Or maybe it won't. Who knows? Not horribly loud. Definitely let you know the amp's on though. Alright. So it's somewhat of a decent ground going on. Got the right microphone for the right radio. Hello. We're good. Everything thoroughly, thoroughly tested. I gotta tell you guys, I was really having a hard time finding the motivation yesterday. It's been a tough week. <clears throat> so it's been kind of a tough month so far, but it is what it is. Tomorrow, we're off to go celebrate my birthday early. The reason we're doing that is because it's so close to Christmas that it's just not fair to ask people to come out and do anything the day before Christmas like that. It's just not cool. Those of you that are December babies, you know exactly what the hell I'm talking about. So, things are looking up. Um, I've got some really, really fun stuff that's getting ready to come out here on video just in the next day or so. So really keep an eye on the channel, you guys, those of you that watch this stuff all the way to the very end. I appreciate your patience and holding in there with me. Look, uh, I'm a one-man band. I gotta do everything myself. That means answer all the phone calls, answer all the emails, reply to all the texts, 
order all the parts, and actually do all the work, including the video editing. Please, for the love of God, unless you need to call me, don't. <laughs> but if you do, and you've got a question and something that you feel that I only can help you with, don't hesitate to call this number. All right. Look, I gotta run. This is gonna be a chaotic next two weeks. I gotta build a 32 pill. Plus, I've got three or four amplifiers that are getting ready to come up for sale that are very unique and exotic. And what do I mean by levels of un unique and exotic? Well, let me move this full legal limit two meter amplifier type accepted amplifier out of the way. Then we'll pick up this beautiful baby. And I'll drop this down for you all to look at. This is a rare, rare fauna and species. Oh yes, boys and girls. Let your eyes not be deceived. Something cool this way cometh. I'll see you, gents. Bye.